Dear Sheriff, for five years I have been filming the police. I have heard that this makes police work harder. For any inconvenience that I've caused, I am s suckers. Who do y'all think I am? Mustang Island audits? I would never apologize to tyrants who violate my rights. Conversely, I realize that I cannot advance our rights or delete any laws from prison. For 836 days, I've been prosecuted for filming the police. Even after they lost a year ago, Fort Bend County refuses to let me have my life back. I think I'm more than reasonably firm, but everyone has their breaking point. I am quitting cop watching. Actually, I quit about a month ago. I want to formally let you know to avoid any viewer misconceptions about my work. I'll still be on YouTube focusing on other types of government corruption content. Continuing to cop watch is too much liability. I have learned the hard way how police retaliation changes your life, harms your family, damages your reputation, and drains your finances. I am quitting because of what Fort Bend County has done to me. The illegal arrest, the malicious prosecution, discrimination, and the harassment I continue to face from the sheriff's office. The Constitution does not apply here. You cannot record the police if you are known to be critical of them in your reporting. Being present near a police scene allows the perfect opportunity for the police to carry out their motive of eliminating those who speak out against them. Cops are eager to fabricate cases against citizen journalists to nullify our constitutional rights. I now realize that I have no legal protection in Fort Bend County. The sheriff says, I'm not media. Therefore, I have no right to film the police. Perhaps I should go work for one of the community newspapers like the Fort Bend Herald and just report whatever the government wants me to say so they won't arrest me. Ultimately, I would rather report the truth. I don't want to repeat government dogma for my permission slip to film the police scenes. Instead, I will focus on original investigative reports using public records. But the long-term viability of that content is also questionable due to the non-stop open records violations I face. In the United States, the so-called land of the free, there is no right to gather news content about the government. It is a privilege only for those who are politically correct, and only when the police allow you to. To drive this point home, when I went to the jail to film this video, they were hosting the Citizens Police Academy, a group of police supporters approved of by the sheriff. We all pay for the police department, but only the preferred citizens are entitled to learn about the operations of our government and to have their questions answered. When we ask questions, they claim it is harassment and try to arrest us. Hello, I'd like to find some bonding information, and I believe you work at the bond office. Did you have any communication with our staff up here at the front? Did you talk to them? I would like an attorney, please. Do you understand what I'm telling you? I would like an attorney, please. Oh. I'm going to take that as a no. So I'm going to I'm going to tell you again. We're investigating harassment, and somebody that meets your descriptors up here at this office as a suspect. Okay, so that's why you're being detained. Does that make it a little yeah, bit more clear? I would like an attorney, please. You're not under arrest, so you don't have that right. If you have a question about Mr. Pulliam, then you can go ahead and wait until the packet is ready for him to bond out. Until then, you kind of harassing. No, I'm not harassing. Well, I'm just you, seeking information. I'm going to yeah. quit talking to you. Get yeah. out of my face. So just go ahead and. No, go ahead and leave me alone. You back off. Doing what you're back doing off. is not going to help it go anywhere. Get back off me and go to work. The approved citizens are provided access throughout the sheriff's office, courthouse, and jail. But when I arrive, they slam the doors, hide, and try to block documentation of as many official acts of government as possible. Is it a great day for you? You got him? Why would it be a great day Because he's in a cage now. But you can join he's in the cage. Bush, cross this line? I ain't crossing that line. Okay. I, you good? I, like Justin, I don't break the law. You said right. unlike Justin? I said yeah. like Justin, I don't oh, break the law. Okay. But you still <laughs> put him in a cage, sir. The Sugarland police routinely violate the law when they conceal information from me. However, if you are a supporter of law enforcement, you are entitled to a behind-the-scenes look at how the police department functions. The United States continues to fall on the World Press Freedom Index, now 44 places behind Norway, the longtime leader. Several African and South American countries have more press freedom than the USA. The U.S. Press Freedom Tracker has documented numerous recent incidents of retaliation similar to what has happened to me. Here are some of my key takeaways after observing hundreds of police interactions. The law is not uniformly enforced. The penal code, traffic laws, and local ordinances are used as a weapon to destroy pre-targeted individuals. 
The law is merely pretext to justify police action. The laws cited are usually not the true reason for stopping or arresting someone. Your vehicle condition and how you look is a more likely predictor of whether or not you are stopped by the police than is your conduct. The police routinely break the law, including the same laws they purport to enforce. Said another way, the police are exempt from the law. The police are retaliatory. The police do not uphold your constitutional rights. The purpose of the local police is to enforce the local power structure. The police create substantially more violence and unsafe situations than they allegedly protect us from. The police are not keeping you safe while you sleep. Actually, many officers would rather a crime occur than for security efforts to prevent crime. The police lie. This includes lying under oath and in police reports. And that one is a big part of why I'm quitting. It would be one thing to lay out the facts before a jury to say, hey, here's what happened. But that's not how it works. The police, prosecutors, and government attorneys lie. A citizen journalist is at too much of a disadvantage when the government can lie under oath, claiming fabricated untrue reasons for their actions, which a government club judge can then automatically rubber stamp. The cops are not punished for lying in court. If my wife had not filmed my arrest, I would have gone to prison. Let me say it again. Maybe this will motivate you to film the police. If my wife had not filmed my arrest, I would have gone to prison. I hope these observations will be used to create effective public policy, or at least help you protect yourself. I thought John Gray was pushing it when he went two months as a sovereign citizen while filming the cops. But I recently learned another friend went an entire year without a driver's license. In Texas, people go to jail for that. But my white, professionally dressed, middle-aged friend is exempt from police action as he drives around in his fancy BMW. No wonder he likes the police so much. The laws that are used to destroy others are minor inconveniences to him. If you don't believe me, go watch Philip Turner's channel. His first huge video is from Sherman, Texas, just a few miles away from my parents' house. I've driven that same stretch of highway thousands of times without being harassed by the police. But no way in heck was a black man going to cruise down Highway 75 without a shakedown stop. My point is that the class protected by the police has no incentive to restore justice. They don't think there's a problem. They like it that they can call 911 on other people. They think they don't have to worry about the police because they aren't doing anything wrong. But the people constantly harassed by the police are engaged in the exact same conduct. They aren't doing anything wrong either. They just look different or don't have as much money. At any rate, I guess things eventually come full circle because Deputy Mathams was the first officer who opened my eyes to how the police would retaliate for being filmed. And he was also part of the reason I quit. Just to upcharge the guy because that made them feel good. What? What? Wow. Wow. With a camera and a mask on, man. This decision is upsetting to me because I am passionate about individual liberty. I actually thought the Constitution meant something in this country. The reality is devastating. It has shattered my worldview, who I am. Over the past five years, the police and local government have gotten worse. My mom tells me that I shouldn't do videos like this where it shows that the corrupt local officials are getting my goat. And she's not the only one. Several viewers have expressed that my coverage of the negative aspects of activism is discouraging to others and doesn't help get more people involved. Those are legitimate points and I agree. But right now I think it is more important to be transparent so viewers can become better informed about the realities of local government and political involvement. Realistically, most viewers are not going to get involved in politics and activism today. However, everyone can be a more informed voter and discuss these important current events with your folks. Americans claim to be a free people while simultaneously imposing tons of clever exceptions to the purported freedom. There is always a loophole in America. There is always an excuse in Fort Bend County about why I should be singled out and denied my rights. No matter what I do, the local government club will manufacture a justification for their tyranny.